Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America. This episode is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Visit tnvacation.com to start planning your next trip to Tennessee. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I've got a fascinating uh, guest today you're going to get to hear from. Dr. Bill Dickinson is the CEO and co-founder of Tetra Hearing. This episode is especially going to be interesting to my hunting friends out there. Uh, Dr. Dickinson also calls himself an ear geek, and he's going to tell us a little bit about um, how that is. Uh, Welcome, Dr. Dickinson. (laughs) Hey, Scott. Good morning. Uh, Thanks. Thanks for the ability to to be on and share some time with you. It's uh, I I love what we just got to talk about offline and uh, such an awesome awesome introduction to a really cool program with discovery park. So, yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've, I am, um, have, as I said, I've offered you a special behind the scenes VIP tour. So, um, I'm looking forward to getting you over here to checking it out. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, entrepreneurship and what you've invented and, and are sharing out there in the world uh, for hunters. But first of all, let's back up a little bit. Tell me a little bit about where you grow up. Cause as they say, you're not from around here. Um, so tell us a little bit about your uh, childhood and how did you end up uh, in our region? Yeah, well, um, a, a, a pretty cool path. Um, so I was I was born and raised uh, up in, in Michigan, spent the, the great majority of my time in, in the outdoors up in northern Michigan and on the Great Lakes and uh, all kinds of all kinds of fishing and hunting. Um I wish I was smart enough to get to get out of that snow and uh, two, three, four feet of snow every winter. Um, but I didn't. I, you just you just do what you what you grew up doing your whole time. And man, we ran snowmobiles and sleds and ice fish and did all that stuff. And then and then I had a great opportunity to, to come down and join faculty at Vanderbilt, and uh, and I saw how the rest of the world got to live. <laughs> during uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, absolutely fell in love with it, fell in love with Tennessee, um, and moved my family. And we, we've been here about 17, 18 years now. Um, almost all of the fun that we've had, uh, as a family is, is, is really to the West. Um, and it kind of, kind of started with our fall in love with, with Kentucky Lake, um, and the big Sandy area and the, and the Paris area. We did a, a, a bunch of camping, um, around that in, and then just all the exploration, mostly chasing ducks and fish, uh, is really kind of what got me introduced to the whole the, the beauty of real foot, um, and just that whole kind of part of the country that uh, I think is is a is a pretty pretty well kept secret <laughs> uh, for anyone who loves doing outdoor activities. So yeah, it's incredible. It's an incredible area, and there's obviously lots of hunting that goes on around here, especially right now. Lots of duck hunting. Um, and soon to be deer hunting, um, I know. Um, so tell me a little bit about what what made you decide to uh, specialize in in the ear. Yeah, well, um, it, to go all the way back, or, or, or the really boring story is, um, I couldn't get, I couldn't stop getting a C in chemistry when I was in pre vet school. So, uh, <laughs> so that's. <laughs> Ear. It's literally it's what introduced me to. Uh, well, actually, what introduced me was a was a cute girl who was in audiology school at a Halloween party. So that's um, if you want to go way back to the beginnings. But um, I finished. Was she, my, was she uh, dressed as a giant ear? No, it was. Uh, it, she was actually dressed as a Christmas tree. So <laughs> that's a good costume. It and, got your uh, attention. And, you know, and this, there was unfortunately boy. So this is kind of cool. Boy got the job. Boy didn't get the girl, but the job got the boy, the girl. So <laughs> I've, I've been worried, married to my, my wife, Lisa. Uh, matter of fact, next month is 27 years. We've got, uh, we've got three awesome kids. Uh, one's a nurse at Vanderbilt and one just landed a, a, a great marketing PR job uh, up, up outside of Chicago. 
And my youngest is uh, is kind of kicking butt, literally and figuratively, um, over in high school here. He's a, he's a junior, rising senior. He's a um, great kid, football player, lacrosse player, and um, just enjoying – Having having the last my last child kind of get ready to to launch and, and leave the house. Um, the upside is right now probably the biggest the biggest thing on his college roadmap is uh, is over there in Martin. So if if he had to pack up and leave next Monday, he he would he would pack up and and go to to UT Martin right now. So I'll, I'll even That's get great. You know, you know, we have a really robust internship program here with UT Martin at Discovery Park. So maybe, sure. he'll, maybe he'll end up working here. Wow. Uh, stranger things have absolutely happened. So and what, what city are you living in? So we're in, uh, we're in Brentwood, uh, South yeah. of Nashville. And, great. um, Really, that's kind of where we're based. Um, Tetra was started. I always say it, it started a long time ago, back um, when I was at Vanderbilt with um, and met. Matter of fact, my my first my first Tennessee true first Tennessee friend was uh, was one of my interviews when I was when I was looking at joining faculty there. And I walked in his office and we shook hands. And I and I told him for about thirty seconds who I'd already met with that. And I looked over his shoulder and I saw a, a big pile of, of green headed mallard ducks uh, and, and, and a bunch of buddies hanging around him on a picnic table. And I said, you're a duck hunter. And man, we sat there for 90 minutes and talked about duck hunting and bass fishing. <laughs> and uh, when I left, I knew I was moving to Tennessee after that. And his name's David Genevico, Dr. Genevico. He's got a practice here in, in town um, and he's, He's my best bud, and uh, he was kind of the, the the partner that kicked this off with us. And the idea is that if if you ended up if you came into Vanderbilt to get hearing aids, and 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 you were a, a hunter or a fisherman, you got stuck on one of our schedules. And um, and literally, what what we started doing back then, Scott, is is we got to know our our patients that we we're blessed to take care of there for hearing. And you would come in and if you were repurchasing a second set of hearing aids or if you had a, a, a spare set, we would take that spare set and we would reprogram them and design them as your outdoor hearing aid. Hmm. Uh, so literally, we've been doing this, you know, back 2004, 5, 6 is when uh, we really kind of started messing around with this. And then two years ago, we kind of went all in on it. Um David still runs and is active in his practice. Um, I made a very big decision when my son was leaving eighth grade to um, to get off the road. I was an executive for uh, for one of the big hearing aid companies uh, in the world, and so I was on an airplane every every dang week going somewhere. Everyone thought it was an exotic way of living, um, and it was it was high highs but really low lows too, right? Um, I knew my my little guy was heading off to high school, and I wanted to be around for it. And um, I had that talk with my wife, and uh, and two weeks later, uh, Tetra was born. And um, I've dumped my heart and my soul literally into it. And um, and and what we're doing is uh, is is literally trying to we're using hearing as is is a way to continue to just be a couple of like you said ear geeks and hearing geeks. Um, hearing is a major component of both enjoyment and success uh, in the outdoors, particularly hunting. And the problem is, is that most hunters, as a matter of fact, there's a bunch of different research, but well over 85% of all hunters don't wear any hearing protection um, when they're in the field hunting. And um, and like you said it earlier, it it, it, it kind of think you, you kind of it seems like an oxymoron. Like, well, how can you how can you do all that noisy stuff and not think it's going to damage your ears? Um, the the problem is, is that all of the products made the hunting experience really kind of crappy. Um, and so they, they gave up protecting their hearing, particularly the duck hunter. And, and I, I, I promise you, once, once you get some duck hunters that are listening to this, they're going to be sitting there shaking their head, you know, in, in agreement that if you're a duck hunter, you can't take a set of foam plugs and block off your ear 
you can't blow a call. You can't hear your buddies. Um, you, you, you can't be connected to all the cool stuff. The wings ripping behind the blind. And when you get busted with a, with a dozen teal ripping through your decoys and all the stuff that gets us excited, you can't do if you block up your ears and you can't hear. And so um, that's a whole bunch of words to say what Tetra was built on was designed in an awesome hearing experience first, first and foremost. And I'll tell you exactly what we're doing with that, but it was about let's create an awesome hearing experience. And then when the trigger is pulled, we will completely protect the ear. Well, it um, seems like it seems like, you know, obviously hearing is one of the things that once it's gone, then you struggle, you know, you see, you know, some of the seniors in my own life and, and family, you know, are constantly struggling with the hearing aids. And so the more you can protect it leading up to then the better I would think. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm fascinated by also how the hearing aids enhance what you're hearing when you're on the hunt. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, geez, you, you really set up two or probably three different awesome, awesome <laughs> box right there and uh, cover them all <laughs> to, touch, to touch on, on your first really good point is, um, is, is as much awesome work that we can do with with today's technology. This is outside of Tetra. This is uh, I'm putting on my, you know, my my VP of audiology hat and working for the big hearing aid manufacturer again. As as well as taking taking care of people's lives in clinic for 24 years um, before I went to industry. Um, we can do phenomenal. There's unbelievable technology that's out there. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, Scott, it's really just a Band-Aid because uh, we can't fix the damage that has been permanently done to that nervous system. And, and unfortunately, if, if the damage done to the, to the inner ear and the nerve fibers that take sound up to the brain, eventually it starts to damage the brain. And, and that's well, one I, I watched some of your videos, and um, I think um, Uncle Cy – you know, with Duck Dynasty summed it up when he said he was like pretty woman. He's got all this money and nobody to help him here. You know, so I thought that was really a funny, a uh, funny way to put it. But, you know, it is it is the case. It, and that's exactly the case. And and I can't tell you how many times um, and, and, and many off many times it was it was often the, the hunter and the outdoorsman. Um, where I sat in that room and I'm telling you, you know, I'd have a, a 58 or 60 year old or 56 year old, very successful business owner, um, you know, who would get real close, put his hand on my knee and said, I, I can do just about anything that I want in this world, but I have not found a way to buy better hearing. I can't buy new ears. And, and they will, they will spend an unbelievable amount of money trying to chase that Scott. And, um, and that's a little bit what's driving all of this. And, and I'll tell you what I mean by that is that what we're trying to do with Tetra is, is deliver a very, very high end premium sound, um, experience, bring, restore that. I call it, we restore the delight of hearing and, uh, and whether that's in a deer stand or, a, or a duck pit. Um, or chasing a, a, a springtime gobbler, what we're doing is we're going we're going at it through people's passion in their life. Um, but I'm telling you, we've already gotten you know two or three calls today, and one of the first questions that everyone calls, you know, and talks to our customer service, and they say, "Can I use this every day as an everyday device?" And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, but the, the, you know, the big part is like, let's protect it because once it's gone, it's gone. And so a, a big part, you know, probably 50% of our, of our goal with the products with Tetra and developing products was all about protecting the ear. And, and the other part of it is for those guys that should have been protecting it, like Uncle Cy and, and all of the all the guys behind him and certainly in that generation, but man, you don't, you don't need as much gray hair as what that cool cat has. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's the knee jerk reaction is that this is a problem for, for seniors. Um, and the, the reality is that hearing loss is a, is a cradle to grave problem. 
Um, you know, there's an awful lot of kids, babies are being born. The early part of my career and David's career um, was actually being a part of the legislative process um, of, of making sure that of creating state laws so that it's mandated that babies are tested before they're discharged from the hospital, that their hearing is tested. Hmm. And, um, and that's part of that is because hearing is just absolutely foundational to everything else that we need to do in life. Um, you learn to talk because you can hear. We're not bought, we're not built with the ability to, to produce whatever language is being spoken in the, in the home. It's that we model after after what we hear. And so if you don't hear it, it's super hard to learn language. And if you don't learn language, it's super hard to learn to read. And if you don't learn to read, it's super hard to learn math. And, you know, you just kind of keep going down the educational, um, uh, the, the educational opportunities that we, that we have uh, in our early years. And well, it makes me wonder, I, you know, my Facebook page is loaded with, Young young people who have been duck hunting right now with their parents or deer hunting or whatever, and you're making me wonder if those parents are are getting protection for their their children's ears. So that's something to think. You've given me something to think about. Well, good. Then it's a good day, right? Um, so I'm and, curious. I want to back up one second for for other entrepreneurs who may be listening, people with a good idea who haven't yet figured out how to turn it into a reality. You obviously have a passion and had the knowledge and know how. And what? Just roughly tell us how did you and your partner go about going from a good idea to actually having a product that you could promote and sell. Yeah. Uh, well, I think first, first and foremost, oh, let me, uh, let I me heard your dog. We got, we got that, you know, it's that scary Amazon truck that comes every day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he protects us from that guy. So, so your dog's um, hearing is working. That's good. Yeah. I actually, a, a, a little bit, you just gave me a little bunny hole. Um, <laughs> we see some of the cool stuff that we're doing. Um, uh, for dogs, some prototypes. Like you talk about, you talk about the your hunting partner that gets the majority of the of the muzzle blast and gets the majority. Oh, wow. of that uh, gun dogs um, have a tremendous amount of hearing loss, and um, and so one of the things that we talk about all the time is that Tetra is not the new hearing technology company. It's the I'm sorry, I just lost it. It's it's not. <laughs> hearing protection company that, that we're the new hearing technology company. And, um, and we're going to expand to uh, everything hearing kind of in, in the outdoors. Jump back to your entrepreneurial question. Um, you know, probably first and foremost is, is, is being able to, is, is faith and, uh, and, and, and believing in yourself and, and believing that the good Lord, you know, will be with you on this and he's going to, he's got a plan for you. And, um, and, and just because it's not working out according to your plan, um, it doesn't mean that it's not how it should be or, or what's a better plan. Cause I've seen that so many times in my career, but especially in the last two and a half years in building Tetra is you work really hard and you think that, you know, that this is the perfect answer to to a problem, um, and and then it it doesn't really end up. You know, you may hit a, a roadblock or an obstacle, and lo and behold, about two three months later, you realize that that's the best thing that ever happened to you <laughs> was that you didn't get through that door that you were trying. And so, um, you, you got to have faith. You got to believe. And probably the other the other major part. Um, I turned 52 last year. I've been, this is my 30th year as an audiologist. And um, what I've realized that for a long time, Scott, I, I, I tried to carry all the load myself, right? I just, I had to be harder. I had to work harder. I had to be smarter. I had to do extra. Um, the power of a team and the power of, 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 asking for help and the power of asking other people's opinions that have gone before you. Right. And, um, I would probably say that, that those are the two biggest things that over, you know, 30 months that we've been working on this, um, and the success that we've been blessed to have so far, 
uh, really come down to, to those two things. I don't, I don't know at all. Some, but somebody does. Uh, Has there been a point yet um, where you kind of go on, Hey, this, this is going to work. You know, are you, <laughs> Has there been a, a tipping point for you yet? You know, there, 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 there really was. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of awesome. What's funny is uh, if, if, if my partner and buddy David was on this phone or on the call here, it, we'd probably have two different answers, but they were almost back to back. So I kind of say a, a year ago um, in January, matter of fact, it was just about this week. We were, we were very, pleasantly surprised to find out that we were awarded the industry, the, the biggest um, convention show uh, in the, in the outdoors and hunting and shooting sports industry um, is called the shot show out in, and it's out in Las Vegas. It's one of the largest conventions uh, every year. And we were awarded the guns and ammo new innovation of the year award uh, for Tetra. That's Latter. great. Congratulations. Um, and so um, that was kind of what I think was our breakthrough moment. Um, about three weeks later, we came back and we went, we, we had a booth out at the, at the NWTF national wild Turkey Federation, um, which their annual convention it's a consumer based convention and they usually get about 60,000 people in, in three days up at, uh, up at Gaylord here in, in Nashville. They come from all around the country to, for, for this consumer as well. And, um, our booth was nonstop busy. I mean, packed, uh, for three days. And, um, and, and we sold we sold over sixty units right there in the booth that day, where people were were literally like pulling out their car, pulling out their wallets, um, and spending. Once they got a chance to listen to it and and meet us and hear the story, um, to this day I'm shocked that sixty three people, you know, spent six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars um, at a consumer show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no that that speaks to uh, finding a an an audience that has a need, you know, and figuring out a way to fill it. So we're going to take a quick break, and then when we, when we get back, I want to find out more about exactly what it does, and and I'm fascinated by how people, you know, how you measure the inside of people's ears to 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 build it so that it's personalized. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about Duck Dynasty, you know, and and how that came about. So um, we'll be right back. Looking for a family-friendly vacation destination? Visit Tennessee for the mountains, the music, the rivers, the food, the attractions, and so much more. Visit TNVacation.com to start planning today. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast catcher of choice. It will help us get Real Foot Forward in front of even more people. Today, I'm talking with an ear geek, Dr. Bill Dickinson, who is CEO and co-founder of Tetra Hearing. So, uh, Dr. Dickinson, I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, how these um, devices are created. I know they're like individualized. It's not just like something I buy and, you know, stick in my ear. You actually create it using the science that you and your partner have created. How does that work? Yeah. Uh, so you, you chose a great word with individualized. And, and what's interesting um, is that we we have really like three different parts of of indi individualizing tetra um both to your ear and to your lifestyle and and let me talk to you a little bit about what we mean by that what tetra has done is we're 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 the first what we call pursuit based hearing system and by that is that we have we have gone through and we've digitized matter of fact this is what our 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 main patent was was founded on is that we, we were able to digitize all of the different sounds that unique animals make, all right? And so we had an absolute ball. I mean, it sounded like a barnyard for about 
three months uh, over in David's office when we were digitally recording everything. And, and the whole point of that, Scott, is, is that what the, the hearing needs and the protective needs of, let's say, the duck hunter are very uniquely different than the hearing and protective needs of the deer hunter or particularly like the turkey hunter. And so um, when, what Tetra has done is create, created a specific line in, in, in models and in, in, in algorithms, computer formulas, to maximize or optimize the, the hearing experience and the protective experience for each individual type of hunter. And um, it's really like the, the farther we got down that road, uh, it's, it's no different than kind of picking out what weapon you use, the difference between a bow hunter and a, and a muzzleloader hunter or a rifle hunter, or the um, you know, difference between shooting a, a big shotgun like a 12 gauge or a smaller one like a 20 gauge or 28 gauge and um, the type of bullets, the type of camo that you, that you use. Um, everything that we do in hunting is, is very specific to the types of pursuit that we're, that we're engaged in. And that's what we did with Tetra is we, we maximize the auditory experience um, for that type of, of hunting pursuit. One of the best days that we've had in the company, uh, we sat with, with Harold Knight, um, which I, I know majority of your listeners will, will know Harold from, from Western Kentucky and from Knight and Hale game calls, which is a super awesome. You talk about a, a great, American entrepreneurial story. Um, Harold grew up and was trained under under his daddy as a as a barber in Western Kentucky in 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 Katy's area and um, and Harold Knight was uh, or David Hale was a, a farmer a pig farmer in, in Western Kentucky and and the two of them were best friends um, and they they ended up designing one of the most successful. Uh, you know, game call companies um, that the that the outdoor industry has has ever experienced. On top of that, they're two of the most precious human beings that you could ever meet. Absolutely gems. Um, but Harold sat for two days uh, down in the office, and and we used all of our, as you said, being the official ear geeks, uh, we had all kinds of you know high-tech um, audi- audiological science equipment. One of them is that we're able to put a microphone down on your eardrum. And we've done this. Uh, this is really how we, we fixed hearing protection issues for musicians. It's, it's the proper and most scientific way of, of how you should fit a hearing aid. Is that The idea is that we can, I can put a, a microphone down on your eardrum, Scott. I can play some sound in in the in the room you're sitting in right now, and then I can put a device on top of that microphone in your ear, and I can tell the difference. You, you tell what the device is doing for you by looking at the the A to B difference. What is what does it look like in your ear that you're hearing? without the device in your ear and then with the device. And that's how we properly fit hearing aids. It's a scientific way of fitting hearing aids. And all we did is we took all that, as you said, the geeky science uh, into the hunting and shooting side. And so Harold sat there for two days and blew a whole box of duck and goose calls. And we recorded all of that on his eardrum so that we know the exact frequencies of when there's nothing in the ear, this is what it should sound like to an eardrum when a master six-time world championship caller is, is, is working the magic. And then we use that as the base formula um, to, to build our algorithm. And so we said the number one reason why a, a, a waterfall hunter won't put something in their ear is because you can't when you want to blow a duck or a goose call, it, it sounded horrible. And um, that's our whole patent and formula is that we allow those frequencies to pass through. We keep them at a very, at, at a safe level. Um, one of the studies that we did is on nine different hunts, we were, we were measuring kind of the insult of sound on, on the hunter's ear. The majority of that insult was coming from the, the, the calls those calls were, uh, in, and again, you're, you're calling all the time, it, it, at least if there's any activity going on around you, you're, you're blowing that call. And that call is coming out at 120, 124, 126 decibels 
Um, anything over 90 is, is in, in kind of the danger zone. And so guys, before they even pulled the trigger and gals, uh, before you pulled the trigger, were, were, have been damaging their ears just by, by hammering on that call for so long. And so then the, the end results, um, I know that um, I know enough to know that uh, the importance of ear health, whatever the right word is, um, the implications are varied as we age and that uh, damaged hearing leads to all kinds of problems, right? Well, that's that's the other big part is um, is that we're kind of bringing this this healthcare science to to the outdoors and what what nobody's talking about um, certainly in the hunting and shooting space is uh, the, the biggest and newest and, and most advanced research that that we have in hearing science has been over the last 10 years there's absolutely unquestionably been proven evidence of the strong correlation between hearing loss and, and what we call cognitive processing disorders. What the heck does that mean? Well, it means, is, it means memory loss. It means kind of big words and scary words that nobody likes to hear, like dementia and Alzheimer's. And um, how our brain works is largely dependent on, on how we take care of it across our lifetime. And, and what there's been some some very large studies that have been done at Johns Hopkins where they 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 studied um, from 30 year olds to 70 year olds, uh, and they had they had over 800 in each group uh, in every 10 years of life, every every decade of life, and for 15 years they followed them. And one of the biggest surprise findings, uh, and this is all about looking at, at the propensity of Alzheimer's and dementia across a lifetime, and how do some people get it and some people don't get it. And um, they, they broke it up literally into, into two different categories. Part of it is genetics, and, um, and we're just kind of screwed. It's what mom and dad gave us, right? If, <laughs> and, and if we live long enough and we have enough of our own birthday cake, uh, which is what's going on, right? We're, we're beating other healthcare issues where the, the average lifespan is continuing to climb for both males and females. And, and if you have a genetic component, uh, a family history of Alzheimer's and dementia, um, chances are it's going to show up in your life at some point if you, uh, if, if you live long enough. That's only about two thirds. About a solid third of all Alzheimer's and dementia that's out there across the across the globe. This isn't just a U.S. issue. Is is it's called lifetime modifiable risk factors, which is just fancy. Do what do we do to ourselves as as we live and age? And uh, the the whole point of this, Scott, is that what what all of this research has found in the last decade is that. If you have hearing loss, particularly in your midlife, so 35 to 55, um, if you have hearing loss in those early parts of your life, you have a four and a half to five times greater incidence or opportunity uh, or likelihood that you'll have dementia and Alzheimer's when you're over 60. And, um, and there's all kinds of science that we can uh, be happy to kind of tie it to this uh, to the podcast or give your, give your listeners, you know, some, some different links that they could click on to, to learn more about it. But man, that's, that's why we're going so hard. Um, we're going, you know, the idea is that for Tetra, like I'm, I'm the perfect consumer at, at, at 55 because I've got, I've got kids that have been hunting with me. And so, you know, I'm the one that can influence their behavior, um, just like hopefully their safe driving habits and that they buckle up and, uh, and, and do all the, you know, smart stuff um, that, can, that can change outcomes and change lives um, at a young age. Um, but the idea is, you know, I need it, my kids need it, and my dad needs it. And, um, and, and everyone needs it for a different reason. But you, you, we got to start doing a better job as society about protecting hearing, protecting our ears. Um, and a lot of that, you know, this is, the, this is the awesome work that you guys are doing over there about stimulating, you know, kind of hearts and minds. And uh, if, if, if little Johnny shows up in the duck pit up there at, at Real Foot Lake for the, his first hunt at age seven or six or eight, 
it doesn't have to be little Johnny. It's little Susie too, right? Uh, right, it's, it's, right? It's not a boy girl thing. But if you show up and you look down in that pit with you, and you know you got your dad and your older brother and your uncle Tommy and grandpa, and no one's wearing any hearing protection, guess what? You're not going to do. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this is about mentoring. It's about leadership. I mean, we have changed. Uh, we've changed as a society on our on health and safety in so many ways. I mean, you and I probably grew up, I know I did. When I turned, when I was my son's age and, and I got that driver's license, which was everything, I, I remember mom and dad asking, please wear your seatbelt, right? I mean, m- my son doesn't have any idea what it's like to drive in a vehicle without a seatbelt. Right. Because it, it's right. a law and it's all that he's ever seen, right? Yeah, the first thing my dad did with a new car was cut the seatbelts out. <laughs> so it is it's a different world today. How did that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> so before we close, I want to um ask you a little bit about Duck Dynasty. I know that folks out there listening even if they don't know anything about hunting are familiar with Duck Dynasty. How did that come about? Your relationship with them? Well, um it actually so it's a perfect way to kind of close it all together. Um I I met I was introduced to to Justin Martin, who heads up kind of um, the you know Duck Commander. Um, there's Duck Commander, which is the business, and Duck Dynasty, which is what America knows as uh, everyone's famous, America's most famous duck hunters, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the the Robertson family and and all of that good stuff. Um, and when we were out at Vegas last year with that Shot Show Award. Um, uh, you know, Justin came up, introduced himself and said, he's like, tell me more. He's like, I, this has been the biggest problem for every duck hunter uh, that, that that has ever walked into a, a hunting situation is that you can't plug up the ear and blow your call and hear your buddies and be connected to nature. And, and man, we, I pulled out a set and put them in his ears and, and he had kind of a, are you kidding me moment? <laughs> and, um, and he had about two weeks left in his season and he took them. Um, I said, just, just take them and hunt with them, Justin. And, and you, you, you tell me what you think and let's talk about them. Kind of thinking that, you know, I may never hear from him again. Um, and, and about five days after the season closed, Scott, he was on the phone and saying like, this is phenomenal. I've never had anything like this. Uh, we need to work together. And, um, and that's literally how it started. Again, it was it was it was relationships, right? It was like somebody, uh, and you know, there's a lot of fate in there. But I went down and, and fit all of the guys. Um, it was truly a pinch me moment. I mean, literally sat down with Phil and Cy, and I'm telling you what we saw on on A and E every you know every Thursday night for a long time when it was on on TV was exactly what they're doing. All they, all the, all Hollywood had to do was show up and turn the cameras on. And, uh, and, and those guys are living exactly the same way today as, you know, we watched on the television show for a long time and they're just some of the most genuine human beings, uh, you know, that, that truly have walked the earth and, um, and and they do some crazy stuff and they got some crazy thoughts, but, uh, man, they're a lot of fun. And what they do is, is they have respect of, of a whole lot of people, um, for a lot of reasons. And, and that's how, that's how change happens, right? Is it's not so much that the smart doctor can get up and talk about all the benefits. And that's actually one of the funny things is I came back from my visit with them and that was another kind of aha moment, breakthrough moment is like once they, once they started talking about it and posting social media and doing all that, I mean, it was, we were cooking with gas, right? Well, I noticed, I noticed, and that was one of my questions I was going to ask you, uh, you do great with social media, with communication and, you know, typically, I don't know how many, um, um, doctors of audiology or whatever you are. I don't know how many of those have, are experts in social media also, but somehow you've, uh, you do an incredible job at that too. Are you doing all that on your own or, or how, how's that happening? Well, I'm, I'm heavily involved with it, but I'm, um, I am, I'm as of two years ago, how about this? I got my first Facebook account 
the day that Tetra launched in 2019. <laughs> so that gives you that's a, that gives you a little bit to the answer to that is no. Um, You're a quick learner then. But uh, I, you know, I, I, I heavily influence. I'm, I'm going to tell you the shout out goes to our, our marketing agency uh, up in Evansville, Indiana, uh, which is Gray Loon. Um, and they are, they are some of the, the smartest and uh, best people to, to work with on that. They handle that. Um, but it's amazing, you know, how, how we're influenced and boy, that's a bigger topic in, in today's world. But, um, I swear I, I could reinvent the inner ear and I could have tried to talk about it for five years and, you know, uncle Cy only has to post one thing, <laughs> <laughs> hold the Tetra and says, you know, Hey Jack, don't be an idiot, protect your hearing. And, you know, and 20,000 people will agree to it. And, and, and a lot of people pick up the phone and buy right there. Cause, cause uncle Cy says, Hey Jack, you know? So um, we'll, we'll put uh, links to um, your information you provide us in the show <laughs> notes, but if somebody wanted to uh, be like uncle Cy and, and find out more about uh, your product and the stuff you're doing, where would they need to go? So you can start on our website. There's uh, there's a lot of different options you have here. You, our website is, is tetrahearing.com. Um, you can also put in tetrahunt.com and uh, you'll go through all of that. A couple of the big call outs. We try to be super educational on there. Um, so, you know, I, I think at at the at the risk of having too many words, we want to make sure that um, that things make sense and that you kind of understand the science behind what we're doing and then the healthcare aspect of it. So you can, you can really get well informed. We've got um, a pretty active blog section that is most of that has been written by um, myself or William Frawley who heads up our, uh, our, our customer service and then David Genevico. Um, and it's all about that. We're just kind of regular guys that love spending time in the woods, just like you. Um, and we, we kind of talk about our experiences, what we're trying to do with Tetra. The other part um, is when you get on the website, you can you, you'll see a phone number, you'll see a chat. Um, we take that super serious. We we try to answer every single phone call. It'll be one of those three names that you've heard, Bill or David or William, uh, and we'll we'll just walk you through whatever you need. Um, uh, matter of fact, I'll give you my cell number. I'm going to say it right now. Anyone's welcome to call it. It's six one five six one eight. 9904. And I will answer the phone and spend as much time on on this. It's about connecting with people. It's about building relationships. One of the things um, that you'll see is that we say our slogan is, is hear the hunt. And, and to me, we mean all aspects of the hunt that it's, it's, it's stopping at the gas station with grandpa and getting that biscuit and driving in the truck on the, on the way to the hunt. Right. And it's spending time in the duck blind and it's talking about stuff that we talk about in the deer stand. And when we're stalking turkeys uh, with loved ones that maybe doesn't get talked about all the time at home. I know that's certainly true for my son and I, um, most of our, most of our big talks on life have, have been in the outdoors. And, um, and, and we talk about here, the hunt, it's as much, it's about people. It's about hearing nature. It's about hearing the animals that we're blessed to chase. Um, and, and just being connected. We need relationships, man. Right. Especially, especially what's going on around us. And it's just dialogue and expressing thoughts, listen to other people's opinions, um, it's all hearing based and, and we're, we're, we built some great technology for the outdoors, but at the end of the day, it's about relationships and it's about, you know, learning and loving together. So, well, thank you so much for being here and sharing all this with us. It's given us a lot to think about and, um, I don't spend a lot of time hunting, but the thing at the top of my list now is, is, uh, to protect my ears. So thank you for that. Do something, uh, you know. Um, Hashtag hear the hunt. Hear the hunt, exactly. It doesn't, uh, Tetra will be here when and if anyone's ready, but uh, the most important thing is to do something. Um, and then we've, we've, we've accomplished our, our mission right there. So Scott, this has been great. Um, I can't wait to, to get over and, and actually go through and, and, and see the, the great work that's going over at discovery park. And, um, 
people need more of this. And so congratulations on being super successful with it. And uh, I, we'll, we'll jump on and join anytime you let us. So Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoy this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.